the new way of thinking developed in anthroposophy confirms the gospel in all its richness in a way worthy of modern thinking man. The death and resurrection of Christ can be understood as the fulfillment of the ancient mystery initiation. But instead of the neophyte, surrounded and protected by a circle of twelve hierophants, the greatest master passes through the three-day death, carrying the circle of twelve disciples, and indeed the whole cosmos. This makes it possible to understand the apparent contradictions in the picture language. The evangelists drew on differing mystery schools to describe the life of the Savior of the world. It also explains the similarities with the myth of Osiris, the legends of the Buddha, and other prophetic images. By investigating the evolution of consciousness, anthroposophy learns to take the myths of ancient cultures seriously. Deeper spirits have always sensed the reality and spiritual potency of the Gospel according to John. The great Church Father, Origen, who was anathematized for speaking, among other things, of the pre-existence of the soul before birth, said that to understand this book, you yourself have to become another John. We should therefore make bold to say that the foremost of all the scriptures are the Gospels, and of the Gospels, the foremost is that according to John, whose meaning no one can receive who does not lie at the breast of Jesus and receive from Jesus Mary, she becoming his mother as well. The poet Matthias Claudius senses, when I read in John, it is always as if I see him before me at the Last Supper lying at the breast of his master, as if his angel were holding the light for me, wishing, at certain passages, to lay his arms around my neck and say something in my ear. Johannes Eriugena, Thomas Aquinas, Fichte, Schelling, the list of admirers goes on. Being a book of esoteric schooling, it can be read backward. This eventually reveals the composition in all its integrity, and it also reveals the author. He appears in his own book. This is the disciple who bears witness to these things and wrote this. Only here, at the end of the book, is the author identified. To find out more about who he is, you now have to go back. Some consider him immortal. Therefore the saying spread among the brothers, that disciple dies not. But Jesus did not say to him, he dies not. But if it is my will that he remain until my coming, how will it affect your task? He has to do 
with the second coming of Christ. Jesus says to him, If it is my will that he remain until my coming, how will it affect your task? You follow the I Am. His mission is a secret. Upon seeing him, Peter says to Jesus, Lord, what shall he do? He is called the disciple whom Jesus loved. This signifies the relation of the master to an especially advanced pupil. Other than that, he does not seem to have a name. Peter turns and sees the disciple whom Jesus loved following, the one who lay at his breast at the supper and said, Lord, who is it who betrays you? In his quiet, anonymous way, he accompanies in the background the founder of the exoteric church. The reference to the Last Supper encourages us to continue the backward search. He can identify the Risen One. So that disciple whom Jesus loved speaks to Peter, It is the Lord. He understands the mystery of the grave. So then entered the other disciple as well, who had come first to the tomb. And he saw, and he believed. Believing, or faith, does not refer to that uncertain substitute for knowledge commonly meant by such terms today. It is a faculty of supersensory cognition, the power of the heart to see truly. The perceptions become transparent after he pauses. He minds the threshold of the grave which is also an inner threshold. And stooping, he sees lying the linen shrouds, yet he entered not. In him lives youthful Easter energy, the two were running together, and the other disciple ran ahead, swifter than Peter, and he reached the tomb first. He investigates the resurrection. So Peter went out, and also the other disciple, and they went to the tomb. The disciple fervently devoted to Jesus turns to him with her questioning sorrow, and she comes to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus held dear, and she says to them, They have taken the Lord from the tomb, and we know not where they have laid him. He wrote the gospel to school an organ of higher cognition. And he knows that he is speaking true, that you too may learn faith. He is the witness of the etherization of the blood. 
but one of the soldiers prodded his side with a spear, and at once blood and water came out. He who saw it has borne witness, and true is his witness. By the mystical union beneath the cross, he becomes the son of Maria Sophia, and Jesus, seeing the mother, and standing beside her, the disciple whom he loved, speaks to the mother, O woman, behold, your son. Then he speaks to the disciple, Behold, your mother. And from that hour, the disciple received her into his own. Behold is an invitation to deeper perception. His own is an expression from the prologue of the gospel. It means not merely his house, but his self. Throughout the book, the mother is not named. Her esoteric identity as Sophia is what enables the disciple, when he takes her into his own being, to write the gospel. He opens the way for the leader of the disciples to the place of trial. Peter stood at the door outside. So the other disciple, the acquaintance of the high priest, came out and spoke to the doorkeeper, and she let Peter in. He moves in the leading circles of Jerusalem, Simon Peter followed Jesus, and so did the other disciple. That disciple was known to the high priest, and he entered, together with Jesus, the palace of the high priest. He poses the question as to the being of evil by asking about the betrayer. Lord, who is it? During the Last Supper, he lies at the heart of Jesus. So he, leaning up thus upon the breast of Jesus, says to him, Lord, who is it? Later, a grain sown in the breast of Jesus became the epitaph of Christian Rosenkreutz. The exoteric leader of the disciples seeks knowledge from him. So Simon Peter nods to him to find out who it is of whom he speaks. He is connected with the inner life of Christ. One of his disciples was lying in the lap of Jesus, whom Jesus loved. The lap is another expression from the prologue. It can also mean womb and refers to the hidden inner being.
one last mention, and we find that he does have a name after all. So the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you hold dear is ailing. Evidently, that is enough to identify him. Now there was someone ailing, Lazarus of Bethany, from the village of Mary and Martha her sister. It was the Mary who anointed the Lord with balsam and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was ailing. The remarkable rotation of names says that the siblings are as entwined as the three members of the human soul. Remarkable as well is the response. Jesus declines to come and heal Lazarus, recognizing instead the illness as the birth pangs of Lazarus's higher being. Upon hearing it, Jesus said, This illness is not unto death, but for the revealing of the God, that through it, the Son of God be revealed. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard he was ailing, he first waited where he was for two days, namely, far beyond and below Bethany where dead mountains plunge to subterranean depth in a great continuation of Lazarus' rock tomb. Christ is connecting with those depths. From there, he accompanies the death of Lazarus and only comes to Bethany when he has been laid up in the tomb for more than three days The raising of Lazarus is the ancient mystery initiation performed before the people. To reveal it is punishable by death. Hence that is the occasion when the Judean religious establishment resolved upon the death of Jesus. The disciple whom Jesus loved, the writer of the Gospel according to John, is Lazarus who was initiated by Christ himself. He appears in the middle of his own book, hiding in plain daylight. Later, he calls himself only by his teacher's love, since that has made possible his transformation. Obviously, his death experience gives him an existential relation to the death and resurrection of Christ. It prepares him to speak the gospel as no other could. It also explains why he was rumored to be immortal. For a long time, the open secret of his identity was only hinted at. For instance, in the Gospel according to Nicodemus, where Lazarus is likened to the eagle, symbol of John the Evangelist. The philosopher Johannes Kreienbühl first published the discovery in 1900. Rudolf Steiner explained it. 